Britain and Ireland celebrate eccentricity as people who bring something extra. I grew up in Mayfair and I was fortunate to, in my, due to my ancestors, I had access to the secret tunnels of Mayfair. You can go down the stairs at the back of Albany, Burlington Gardens, Mount Street Gardens, where all the spies used to take. My father was a spy in the Second World War and, and after. So I had all my father's stories and his ancestors' stories and these great... He had access through the keys to the underground world of Mayfair. I became enchanted by the history of Mayfair and I felt part of that history because of the IRA, Mayfair was one of the um, popular spots to throw your Molotovs. So I went through all that tragedy. It's almost a different London, but it's certainly a different Mayfair. Um, well, I have Asperger's. I don't really, I had no friends as a child. I was friendless and did not really, I had strong relationships with animals and objects and clothes and my but I didn't connect with people till I was 13 um, I wore what I wanted to wear when I was very young I think this helped me get through I was an odd little girl I would walk around in these Victorian dresses with the of my ancestors with the train this is around Mayfair with my white mice which I'd rescued from the labs, laboratory, white mice running all over me. And my mother used to always say to me, well, who'll be looking at you? People aren't thinking about you, they're thinking about other things in their lives. Uh, the gay uh, father of science, Francis Bacon, invented the word ma uh, masculine love, but he also brought the word eccentricity, which means the deviation. If a planet doesn't perform a full, a perfect circle in its orbit around, the degrees by which it goes off the circle and it's elliptic are called eccentricity. So the term eccentricity began to describe an original, someone who didn't conform to m masculine man or feminine woman. Historians such as Thomas Carlyle Macaulay in Victorian time from 1645 onwards started producing these revisionist histories which weeded history of all the eccentrics. We now know them as LGBTQ but there was no such term, even the word homosexual didn't exist till after Oscar Wilde's trial. There was certainly no term for transgender until 1986. <laughs> Afra Ben wrote an anti-slavery book. She was a spy. Inadvertently, she, she's most famous as the playwright of the Restoration. And she translated Margaret Cavendish, The Scientist Works, into Latin, because that scientific works were published in Latin. She, when she was 19, went with her family under the name of Johnson, although she was born Afra Amos. The family traveled, her father was a spy, secret agent. He died on the ship. She was 19, so it was agreed they'd make the journey. She was fluent in Dutch. She was fluent in French, the language of court. She was appalled by seeing slaves, and she befriended one of these slaves on her uncle's plantation. He was a uh, king, an African king, and so she secured a cachet of arms and assisted him in leading, leading a slave rebellion and provided him with transport with him and his people back to Africa. And she was so famous before she came back to England in 1664, after her work there, she was a household name across Europe for leading the slave rebellion. He signed up as soon as the war began, but he was rejected on medical grounds because he, well, he was gay. When I was a little girl growing up, he always wore a lot of makeup because he had so much makeup on. He was like soft. Do you know what I mean? He was like soft and fluffy like a marshmallow. I think we got. I think he helped me a lot with my Aspergers because he just let me sit with him and he would ask me questions and he would give me advice. But he told me that I must write about eccentrics. He said, do you know what eccentric means? And I said, yes. He said, 
I'm an eccentric because I was born in the body of a man. Of course, I should have been born in the body of a woman. I would have become a woman if I'd lived in a different time. I realised that the people who'd been weeded out of history, ghosted from history, uh, removed from history, whatever you want to call it, were women and LGBTQ who had, they are the majority of the population, so why do that? It's not like they're a little minority group. They are the, the, the majority of who we are as people. The world was created by women and LGBTQ.